What's up, friends of the good mood? This is money, and welcome to the third and last Christmas video for you guys here with War Robots, and a video that I want to primar primarily just focus on having fun with you guys, right? Recorded before modules came in, uh, I uh, I want to show you the Vortex and AFIT areas, okay? What a crazy idea is that? I mean, you have the ability to annoy the heck out of your enemies and fire over cover with a lot of damage output, and you can also switch to your invulnerable shield and also... Uh, or Absorber Shield, that's what it's called, and add the additional extra weapons to kill whoever rushers trying to attack you, right? So, in as far as the theory goes, this is probably one of the awesome, most awesome setups you can run. However, the reality sometimes looks different, and we're gonna have a look at how. Uh, for example, here I'm unable to kill this guy. He's got only 1000 HP or whatever. Any Orcan Rocket would just kill the dude, but unfortunately, I got nothing to shoot at him with when he open enters stealth, I can't even do one point of damage to him because he is losing. I'm losing my target, and I can't fire just when I want to, right? So next guy opens stealth. Ten seconds of reloading or firing wasted, pretty much. Then I get unfortunately locked down right before I wanted to activate my um, my invulnerable mode here and my shield. But at least I walk behind the cover right in time before he manages to get me hit with a shock train while my rockets were a pretty good hit on him. Trying to capture the beacon, six seconds, five seconds till I could reactivate my my shield. Unfortunately, he spawns, of course, with a stealth robot, uh, making it unable for me to shoot even once and then get myself killed right before I would have activated the shielding. Dang it. All right, so anyways, next match, jump right in. And I'm just showing you some highlights of this, okay? Because I had to run this quite a lot in order to find some really good decision, uh, you know, matches. If you would ask me, should I really equip that? Should I use that? I would probably say no, even though you can do things like that. Like get this one guy killed super quick, boom, get the second guy killed. But that really was the Ares. It wasn't the Vortex or Aphid that did that. It was more like the Ares with its built-in weapons that made all that possible, right? Uh, any Tyran and Magnum combo would have done more than that. And I would have also been able to do more against that uh, Hellburner that's already getting the second beacon. He took the middle beacon and now he's taking with this insane Hellburner uh, the beacon to the other side. And he's already succeeded in doing so. His teammates spawned with him or some team buddy. And now they're locking down the beacon and there's no chance for us to even remotely get that. Of course everybody always spawns in with a stealth robot so we may as well just go and kill myself because I'm never gonna go and do any damage to him. However, however I found a target that at least got a little bit of damage to it. And, uh, and that's just one of those frustrating moments. Everybody jumps in with stealth and you're fully worthless. Your weapon is completely worth. You're not even going to... Even when they run fast it's hard to hit them. But being, uh, having no opportunity to even fire at someone is another, if a whole different level, you know? Anyways, let's try and focus on this guy. He's standing there, completely stationary, but somehow my Vortex and Aphid did only minor damage to him. Probably because some of it hit the wall. Anyways, let's keep on going right here. We have an enemy pursuer still sitting on the beacon. And I'm trying to make, uh, yeah, to get him as soon as he comes out of stealth. There it is. Boosh. This guy's done, and I should have probably saved some for the uh, Bulgazari in the back. It, it wasn't really necessary to shoot all of those. But let's go in. Let's we, let's use the built-in shield and the built-in weapon systems. Get that Pursuer with a lot of damage output and switch to the built-in weapons uh, to retaliate, pretty much, uh, against the guy who just captured our beacons. However, I'm in a 4 on 1. Behind to, to, behind to my right, something with Orcans. To my left, something with Scourge. Two guys in front of me, uh, Haichi Orcan and uh, the, the Pursuer I'm trying to kill. And then the other remaining two guys with Orcan Haichi and Kamiho right there. I'm literally in the middle of all six enemies right now. All six of them. That is absolutely crazy. Alright, so let's go into the next situation. In this one, I'm able to show you very obviously why this is so frustrating sometimes. So, don't get this set up. It's just fun sometimes, but it doesn't always work. Look, full hit on an almost stationary uh, Strider who had his shield the wrong direction. So, I'm activating my shield. He simply uses his dashes to get behind the cover and doesn't care about my opening with my firepower. He is still stationary. His shield is looking to the left in the wall. His shield isn't even held up. And even though he was stationary again, didn't take any real damage from the Vortex. So doing another one, bam, 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 bam. No damage, no damage, no damage, no damage. The only reason he suffered damage was because uh, the, the Spectre in his back. And if it wasn't for that Spectre, I might have even died against this 10% uh, Strider. Completely unable to do anything against it. You saw this Bulgazari had 10% health. I launched all four Vortex and Aphid. He still has 5%. 
so I done maybe 2,000 damage at him. Next guy comes around, always needs to have something aimed at so that I can at least quick switch, and then he walks back into cover. And uh, yeah, in this case, at least I got him hit with the Vortex and a AFID a little bit better, and he does die. And I'm lucky that I'm even still alive against so many enemies. I had some nice backup there, but uh, without that backup, I would have had no chance and I would have been killed, no problem, man. And uh, it's all because the setup is so worthless against so many enemies you are just completely unable to deal. Even one point of damage is just not possible. You're just not gonna make it happen. There's nothing coming out of your robot. Anyways, uh, in this case, and this is what I wanted to do it for, launching Vortex and Aphid over a cover. This is what makes this setup work. This is what makes the setup fun, especially against Inquisitors. When they have their stealth used, they will take a while until they regenerate it, and they are not fast enough to dodge the rockets with their walking, so they get the full blast with these rockets. This is just, this is why I want this. Boom, get this guy killed, and then draining some shield on this Haichi on the other side. Uh oh, we have an Inquisitor jumping in with a death button Inquisitor here. So what do I do? I'm waiting for his stealth to drop. Yep, keep something aimed at, keep something, and then once his stealth comes out, boosh. Look at him real quick, make a quick switch, fire everything I've got, I've got and get him killed while I'm about to die myself. So uh, yeah, that is more fun with the Vortex and AFIT Ares. We're still going, by the way, this is not it. We're, we're doing a, car a carrier here. Bam! So that, that Komiho was fully locked down, right? And lockdown means, well, you get yourself super quickly killed by uh, by Vortex and Aphid. Even that Pursuer just got a direct hit, and he wasn't even locked down. He just stood still for a second for some reason, and that was when the Vortex and Aphid came in. So I'm hoping I can succeed in showing you what I want to show, that this setup has both. Super fun and super amazing, and then super horrible and super useless as well. So it's like both. It's crazy. Like... In the one situation, you absolutely obliterate your enemy and it's insane and they don't stand the slightest chance. And in the next situation, you find yourself being so vulnerable and worthless. And um, and that is the setup. So is it something you should take? Probably not, but it's definitely fun to run. And since focusing on fun is what we do right here, let's do this. I know when I'm right here, I can send these Vortex and Aphid in this high altitude angle, uh, which they do right here, coming in from super high above. Even hitting the Bulgazari in the back, you see the hit markers. Unfortunately, though, his physical shield and his dash prevented a really good hit from coming out. So we have another Bulgazari right there, who of course had his both sh uh, dashes ready. But I can at least still run in here with my shield up and send some rockets around the corner. Got it, nice. But the next one, called Pixonic, is killing me. Damn it, Pixonic, why did you kill me? Here we get killed. Rampage. Oh, he even was on Rampage with this one. Nice job, Pixonic, dude. Uh, he was on a rampage with this with this action and uh, got me pretty good. I couldn't do anything against it. Now he's still down there. I really would like to kill him, and I'm not sure if I did in that situation. Like I said, this was just the highlights for for this particular setup. So we're cutting into the next spot here, having some more fun with this setup as well. Uh, let's send the rockets at whatever this is. I don't know what it was, but it took next to no damage. And, and now the damage is being counter healed by this mender over there too. Dang it. Activating my shield so I can protect myself from the incoming rocket rain. And then, you know, finding, you know, gladly finding some kind of target I can shoot the rest of these built-in weapons at. I was lucky to find some target right there. So getting myself in cover because that mender has vortex and aphid on it too. He could otherwise hit me if I'm not in cover. And uh, now I'm waiting for this dude. He's coming. This is... No, 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 no. This is first off the Haichi still. He had no shield up, so I was able to do a, a little bit of damage to him. Um, and now I'm looking for a target to shoot at. <laughs> There's nothing I can shoot at right now. Everybody is in, uh, in uh, kind of safe at this moment. So what I'd rather do is just sit here and wait a little bit. Keeping some targets in. And maybe I can now sneak a kill, and I think this is where I do it. I'm walking out here. He walks to the left. Yep, they're walking to the left and I pre-target them with the Vortex, send it in a wide angle and a banana to the left and I get him right when he comes out of stealth. So that was, and not stealth, out of the cover I mean. So that was pretty much an instant kill against that, uh, the rest of that 50% mender that was left. So almost, almost completely killed the full Haichi too, did you see that guys? I, he was in Haichi. The target I can't handle at all with Vortex and Aphid. It's the worst thing to shoot at ever. But I was still able to do it, almost kill the whole thing with the built-in weapons only. 
So yeah, Ares, definitely something to run uh, that, that can make this setup here work. Because you have something against anything. Something against energy shield, something that flies over physical shield sometimes, and sometimes that will, uh, yeah, you can shield yourself from any kind of damage too. Let's see what this is. This is a blitz robot, and I don't know why he activated his shield too late. Boom! He got completely one-tapped by this. He was stationary, so he got the full hit blast. And at the same time, uh, his shield came up when my rockets were already within his shielding. And so he activated the shield and the rockets were already within the shield. So boom, it landed and killed him completely. Man, that must have sucked for this dude. <laughs> oh man, sorry man. And that at Christmas, right? But yeah, so it was recorded before Christmas, so he didn't feel that wrath so much. Let's go in here and boom, boom, boom at that Pursuer. Okay, we hit him a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Let's have the next one. Bam. All right, he's down to very low health now. Enough low health for whatever fires with Tolumbas or Tridents from the back to really get him really good. Nice job there, sir. Probably a Trident Fury. And this freaking Dragoon Fury up there is so annoying. I hate this guy with his Dragoons. So I'm coming up here and using my, my position that I have against him because I am now in range and he can fire at me. But no longer. Now I'm safe and he is not. So And this is proving what I want to show here with this setup, that you can just send them over cover and there's no chance. Not even the Dragoon Fury was able to do something. And this is normally the spot where they rule. This spot over there, they usually rule so much from there. Because you can't hit them when they have their weapons hanging out. Unfortunately, that Inquisitor had the stealth left, but on the other side, I was able to force him into stealth jumping, right? Let's get this guy before he hits me and uh, activate my shield against this guy, whoever this is now. Like, everyone is now spawning here, apparently, and uh, I got very little chance to get him killed. But at least, you know, and that's, that's interesting, this Inquisitor that we had fired at before, he had to use his stealth, right, in order to not get hit by the Vortex and Aphid, so... We, you could argue and say we haven't done any damage to him, but yeah, uh, you know, making him him use a stealth jump early and not having it ready for when he really needs it is uh, very important too. So even we're and this is me showing you that you can even brawl against against a full brawling setup like the Scourge Bulgazari. How brawly is that? And he even has a physical shield that he can use against uh, against me, but I was able to counter brawl. Once again, that pursuer coming up there. He has a stealth, he had to use it already because of the fact that we have, um, wow, <laughs> that we have him, uh, you know, fired at him with the Vortex. Trying to get in 500 meters range on him, unfortunately he walks back just in time, so I can't reach him. Dang it, alright. Let's run up here and shoot at, oh wow, this is going to be bad for him. This is going to be bad. I wanted to shoot him with the Vortex, unfortunately though, he was out of weapons range right then. So I still dealt 70% of damage, but if I had launched or been able to launch the Vortex early enough when he was in the air, he would have taken so much damage from it because he just landed perfectly then. But, yeah, still able to almost take him with me. Here he is jumping again, and this time he won't survive the landing. No way. And we're and, and on top of Threadnought here, firing from above with Vortex or Aphid or also Thermite, it is just the best thing you could do. It is so much fun. I, if you have a setup that utilizes Vortex, Aphid, or Thermite, try out, try out going on the roof here. If you can safely get there and not getting hit by enemies, you can do so much from this. Not only with the Ares, with just any setup pretty much. Even with a Patman for Vortex. Although, of course, this one has no defensive moves or abilities, so somebody attacking you directly with a Brawler will probably succeed. And here, finally, somebody's coming up to get me here really good. I'm trying to launch the things. I thought he was going to land. He faked it. He faked it so much, man. This is so good. Look, he fakes going down. I thought he has used all the boost he has. And he fakes going for a landing, which triggers my shot to go into the air. And then he has another boost that he sends. If I had launched it now, that he would have landed and getting perfectly hit by the Vortex and he would have been absolutely destroyed. But... He still had some little bit of boosting left in his ho hover, and now he gets me. Well played, my lord. 
may well played. <laughs> so yeah, that's the video I want to show you here, the Vortex Aphid Ares, a fun setup, nothing to be very serious about, just running it as fun, and uh, I felt like, like this fits very well into this Christmas video right here, so once again, happy, um, happy, not happy Christmas, Merry Christmas everybody, happy holidays, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below, and if you haven't already, hit subscribe as brutal as a man can it for more. Thanks for bearing with me, you guys are awesome as always. Money Gaming signing off. Bye-bye.